A very warm welcome to our principal, Mr. To, Vice Principals, Mr. Lau and Madam Tay, teachers, fellow Evigens and online viewers. I am Zena Ko. And I am Ko Poru. And, and we, we are, are your MCs, MCs for today's virtual, virtual National, National Day, Day parade. parade. Our parade commander for the parade is Master Sergeant Chung Yolun of Three Respect from the National Cadet Corps. Boris, say, here. Yeah. Give it bo Sing <laughs> Morris Muscle Morris The supporting contingents this year are made up of cadets from the National Police Cadet Corps, the Red Cross Youth, and the National Civil Defense Cadet Corps. Nong de We are pleased to share with you the achievements of our uniform groups. The SPF and PCC award is the pinnacle award that cadets can buy for in Singapore. And this year, Station Inspector Rianne Marie Tan Metia of For Respect, as well as Staff Sergeant Diana Binti Eddy of For Commitment were awarded it in recognition of their leadership qualities and outstanding achievements. In addition, Staff Sergeant Vaityanathan Vishal of Four Respect and Staff Sergeant Diana Binti Eddy of Four Commitment were awarded the Best Unit Cadet. Also Lim Tingxian of Four Commitment and Rianne Marie Tan Meitie of Four Respect were promoted to the top MPCC rank of Station Inspector. For the Red Cross Youth, Warrant Officer Wang Zhenxuan Onishius of Fort Integrity has been awarded the Director's Award for being the best cadet of the unit for his exceptional leadership skills. In addition, we are pleased to announce that the Red Cross Youth achieved a commendation for the Ambassadors of Blood competition and a gold for the Disaster Risk Reduction Championship 2021. The SCDF NCDCC Pinnacle Badge is the highest accolade given to the most outstanding cadets so that they may be role models of excellence for others to emulate. This year, Warrant Officer Noor Alisha Binti Muhammad Noor and Warrant Officer Deng Hui Qi have been awarded it in recognition of their outstanding leadership qualities. Warrant Officer Deng Hui Qi was also awarded the Unit Best Award for her contribution to the unit's development and programs. In addition, we are pleased to announce that Evergreen NCDCC achieved third position in the HQ NCDCC Infographic Design Program in July 2021. Morris, say, here! Yes. Say, here! Kawalan Kobotan, Kakiwe Po! Sing! Kawalan Kobotan, Masso! Boris! The Guard of Honor contingent this year is made up of cadets from the National Cadet Corps. Kaulan Kubatan, Senang Di Hui We are pleased to share with you the achievements of the NCC. First established in 1901, the NCC is celebrating its 120th anniversary this year. With its mission to nurture inspiring leaders and committed citizens through fun, 
adventurous and military related activities. Our school's NCC unit has maintained a high standard and consistently done the school proud by clinching the Distinction Goal Award in the best unit competition for the past decade. Last year, Master Sergeant Ahmad Shaban from 4 Enterprise, Class 2020, was awarded the Outstanding Cadet Award at the national level, recognizing his contribution and commitment to the Evergreen NCC unit. We will now have the parade salute for our principal, Mr. Tok. Boris, say, here. Boris, hold harapan, ho, but. The national flag was first used as a symbol of statehood when Singapore first gained internal self-government from the British in 1959. It was retained as the national flag when Singapore became independent in 1965. On the flag, red symbolizes universal brotherhood and equality of man, while white signifies pervading and everlasting purity and virtue. The crescent represents a rising young nation and the stars embody the nation's five ideals of democracy, peace, progress, justice and equality. We will sing the national anthem as the flag is being raised. As a mark of respect, follow the national flag with your eyes as it is being raised. And also remember what the colors, the crescent, and the stars signify. Our national flag and national anthem are symbols of our independence and nationhood. As we sing the national anthem with one voice, we unite as one people, one nation, one Singapore. Boys. Homat, Harapan, Ho, but. School, please rise. School, attention. The national anthem. School at ease. Let us now express our feelings as Singaporeans by placing our right fist over our hearts and saying the national pledge together. Boris, Don, Sate, Go! School, please repeat after me, our pledge. We, the citizens of Singapore, pledge ourselves as one united people, regardless of race, language, or religion, to build a democratic society based on justice and equality, so as to achieve happiness, prosperity, and progress for our nation. 
our school pledge. We Visions pledge to be thinking and caring people with respect, integrity, commitment and enterprise. We are committed to aspire and achieve and be the best that we can be. School at ease. School, please be seated. Morris, say, here. The parade will now be dismissed. Morris, akan berjalan lalu dan kuat dalam masa cepat. Kawan kerumatan dahulu. Pegak kekenan, kekenan, bo. Sing. Once again, our parade commander for this year's Evergreen National Day Parade is Master Sergeant Chong Yolun of Three Respect from the National Cadet Corps. Dari kiri, cepat ja, run! Our Guard of Honor contingent, the National Cadet Corps. Our supporting contingent, the National Police Cadet Corps, the Red Cross Youth, and the National Civil Defense Cadet Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of this morning's parade. Once again, I am Zainal Kaur. And I am Kaur Woru. And we, and we are, are honored, honored to have, have been your MCs, MCs for today's virtual, virtual National, National Day Parade. parade. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Evergreen's Academic Awards Day 2021. We will begin the ceremony shortly. A very good morning to our guest of honor. A very good morning to our guest of honor, Miss Lydia Chan, Principal. Mr. To, Vice Principals, Mr. Tra, Madam Tay, distinguished guests, parents, teachers, and fellow Evigens. My name is Jaren. My name is Liana. And my name is Kaden. And we are honored to be your MCs for Honors Day 2021. Today, we have gathered here on this momentous occasion to celebrate and honor the various achievements and talents of our fellow Evigens and their successes. The individuals honored today have attained various achievements and have demonstrated excellence and commitment, which was not an easy feat. Tremendous amounts of commitment and sacrifices have gone into these outstanding achievements. Today, we also celebrate these achievements in a different manner amidst the current climate. Despite what we may face, and as we fight the pandemic and adjust to changing norms, we have chosen this opportunity to celebrate and honour our students for their various achievements. We would now like to invite our principal, Mr. To, to deliver his opening address. Mr. To, please. Good morning, uh, Ms. Lydia Go, Chairman SAC. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Chang, sponsors of Chang Kai Tong Award, Mr. Alan Yeo and Ms. Uh, Jasmine Recording Pao in of progress. Cape Palace, parents and students and uh, colleagues. Uh, this is the uh, second year we are holding our award ceremony online. Nevertheless, I would like to congratulate all awardees. This is your day and I hope you have a wonderful time in spite of these circumstances. Now, let me share uh, three areas that define our theme today that's coming of H. Uh, so the first coming of age is, has to do with the coming of age as a school. 
say that uh, we have become an institution of choice. Now the school has grown together with the Woodlands precinct over the years with the support of the community and various stakeholders like yourself. The school has seen many generations of evidence. Many parents and students choose Evergreen because they believe this is the place where strong foundations would be laid for their children to enable them to thrive. It's caring and professional community of teachers is com committed to provide the best environment to develop in every child a passion to contribute and excel. The second coming of age has to do with coming of age of every child, a place where students grow from strength to strength as they progress from set one to four and five. In their four to five years with us, evigents have the opportunities to develop and flourish through a strengths approach, students find their purpose and learn to relate to one another, recognizing everyone has a unique set of strengths. The Evergreen student is well respected by their peers in other schools. They enjoy a good name in the community and are known to be well-disciplined and self-directed. At home, they can be trusted to care for their family members. They care deeply for their community and are constantly looking for ways to make life better for others. I would like to encourage every e region to continue to believe in yourself and endeavor to grow from strength to strength. And the school, your teachers will be there to support you. The last uh, coming of age has to do with moving forward towards a digital age. Every e region, set one to three, has received your personal learning device by the middle of the year. The school has invested heavily in the professional development of our teachers to deliver high quality lessons they are ICT enabled. The possibilities are endless. In class, students can look forward to a more engaging teaching and learning experience. They can also learn at their own pace by reviewing the lessons on their device and look for new information on topics that interest them. They can look forward to learning beyond our shores. For example, in 2020, teachers were able to mount learning trips to China and South Africa. Students interacted with their peers in different parts of the world through skillful use of ICT and creative lessons. Some of you had the opportunities to have a, a kind of a learning exchange with students from overseas last year as well. So I hope uh, you will continue to do more of that. We believe we can raise many more generations of caring leaders and thinking citizens who will make a difference wherever they are. So back to uh, our ceremony today. I would like to congratulate all the awardees. Uh, remember, uh, the stakeholders are with you. The school is with you. Your teachers are with you. Uh, and all it takes is for you to recognize that you have innate uh, ability and strengths. Um, and you will take time and put in the effort to enable yourself to flourish so that you can contribute to um, the community. So with that, I pass the time back to the MC. Uh, have a wonderful morning, everyone. Thank you, Mr. To. It is our honour to, to also have the chairperson of the School Advisory Committee, Ms. Lydia Chan, to address us. Ms. Chan, please. Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you. I really enjoy the National Day Parade and the touching story that you have put so much time and work into it, all right? And thank you for your kind introduction. So good morning, principal, Vincent To, teachers, students, parents, and friends of Evergreen Secondary School. Today, I feel really honored celebrating our school spirit of excellence. This ceremony is among our most treasured occasion of our school as it provides an opportunity to recognize, acknowledge, reward the academic and artistic and all the uh, national cadets and related activities, achievements of our exemplary students with parents. The students' achievement not only made us proud, but brought accolades and distinction 
to our school, it made us stand out from the crowd and become a school of choice. I would like to express my heart, my gratitude to our principal, uh, teachers and parents for their unwavering support and collective efforts towards the development of our young talents, uh, showing our students to rise above adversity and be a powerful source of inspiration, as well as providing psychological safety to our students. My heartfelt congratulations to the award recipients and their families. If you graduate today and stop learning tomorrow, you are uneducated the day after. What works today will not work tomorrow. Education is a passport to the future. Education is not just about doing well academically in school. It's about educating both the heart and the mind. You have to start preparing today to navigate this constant evolving new world to equip yourself to be future fit, future ready, and future proof. I am a strong believer not just to survive, but to thrive, you will need IQ, intelligence quotient, EQ, emotional quotient, and DQ, digital quotient, as our principal had mentioned in his speech. All right, that you are very fortunate and blessed to be given uh, the hardware, and it's up to you to explore. I'd like to emphasize on EQ the ability to understand, use, manage your own emotions in positive ways to relieve stress, to communicate effectively, most important, to empathize with others, your classmates, your, your peers, your uh, superiors, anybody uh, that you come across. I like to quote, People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but will never forget how you make them feel." Unquote. This is by Neo Angelo. Another quality that you must have, social skills. You must learn to build social connections collaborative relationships with others and to network. I like also to quote uh, Milton Berlick. He says, if opportunity doesn't knock, build a door. What does it mean? It means embrace uncertainty with a new agile mindset, find an old turn out route to create the opportunities. Finally, digital quotient. We are in a digital e economy. You need to raise your digital skills to stay relevant and to stay ahead of the digital curve. I would like to share uh, my guiding light and reflection from a Harvard University professor. I encourage you to ponder and reflect after each lesson or presentation. It is as simple as three, two, one. Three, two, one. Three things you learn, two concepts you will explore, one change you will make going forward. In conclusion, don't think outside the box. Think like there is no box. So stay positive, stay hopeful for a brighter and better tomorrow. Thank you and happy National Day.
Thank you, Ms. Chan. We will now present the school awards for academic performance by subject in 2020. These students have worked hard to achieve outstanding results and therefore their perseverance must not go unrecognized on this stage today. Receiving the award for first in level in the secondary four normal technical stream, we have Tan Avro. For second in level, we have Tan Jun Rong. Receiving the award for third in level are Benjamin Yeo Kai Cheng and Selena Nui Ming Yuan. Receiving the award for first in level in the secondary four normal academic stream, we have Poon Chen Yu. For second in level, we have Pei Jun Yu. Receiving the award for third in level is Ong Wei Zhe. Receiving the award for first in level in the secondary four express stream, we have Ang Hui Yi. For second in level, we have Julisha Tan Li Jing. Receiving the award for third in level is Wang Zheng Xiang. Receiving the award for first in level in the secondary five normal academic stream, we have Kylie Lo Jin En. For second in level, we have Chua Jia Le. For third in level, we have Celine Teng Yong Sin. Congratulations to all the award winners. We will now present the school awards for academic performance by subject in 2020. These students have worked hard to achieve outstanding results and therefore their perseverance must not go unrecognized on this stage today. Receiving the award for best in basic Chinese language, Secondary 4 Normal Technical, Tio Chuang Yu. Best in Basic Malay Language, Muhammad Muhajir bin Mustafa. Best in Computer Applications and English at the NA level, Tan Avro. Best in Elements of Business Studies, Melis Kyung Pei Fang. Best in English Language, Muhammad Aidi Zulkarnain bin Muhammad Fadli. Best in Mathematics, Tan Chin Rong. And last but not least, best in science, Tay Tian Chin Brian. Receiving the award for best in art, secondary four, normal academic, Siti Nabiha Binti Nor Yazid. 
Best in Chinese language, Ho Junwei. Best in Design and Technology and Humanities, Social Studies and Geography, Ong Wei Zhe. Best in English Language, Sophia Xia Hui Feng. Best in Food and Nutrition, Li Zhiqi. Best in Humanities, Social Studies and History and Science, Physics and Chemistry, Pun Chen Yu. Best in Humanities, Social Studies and Literature, Farah Patricia Binti Mohammad Faisal. Best in Mathematics, Tan Jingxian. Best in Malay Language, Nurin Kalisa Binti Rosi. Best in Principles of Accounts, Wu Hai Xin. And last but not least, Best in Mathematics at the O Level, Kok Jia He. Receiving the award for Best in Additional Mathematics, Humanities, Social Studies and Geography, Mathematics and Principles of Accounts, Lim Jia Tse. Best in Chemistry and Physics, Sim Hui Zhong. Best in Higher Mother Tongue, Chinese Language, Go Zhe Jin Aloysius. Best in English Language and Humanities, Social Studies and Literature, Ang Hui Yi. Best in Art, Bernice Cole. Best in Biology, Lu Xing Ro. Best in Chinese language, Karin Ng. Best in design and technology, Lao Kai Xiang. Best in food and nutrition, Chu Tse Xin. Best in Higher Mother Tongue, Malay Language, Siti Khadija Binti Shaharuddin. Best in Humanities, Social Studies and History, Wang Zheng Xiang. Best in Literature, Elton Lee. Best in Malay language, Nuru Hidaya Binti Muhammad Zaid. Best in science, chemistry and biology, Tan Jie Min. Best in science, physics and biology, Yang Jiang Hao, Jaden. And last but not least, best in science, physics, and chemistry, Eldon Su Hao Tian. Receiving the award for best in humanities, social studies, and history, secondary five normal academic, Kylie Lo Jin En. Best in Chinese language, Ye Qi Yang.
Best in Design and Technology and Malay Language, Muhammad Hazim bin Asmi. Best in English Language and Food and Nutrition, Aishwarya Nicole Tan. Best in Humanities, Social Studies and Geography, and Science, Physics and Chemistry, Celine Teng Yong Sing. Best in Humanities, Social Studies and Literature, Muhammad Hanafi bin Nurasha. And last but not least, best in mathematics and principles of accounts is Kyo Moon Kin. Congratulations to all the award winners. Today, we would also like to recognize the recipients of the Outstanding Evigen Award 2020, Ahmad Shaban and Tan Tsin Tat. Welcome, gentlemen, and thank you for taking time off your busy schedule to join us. I have a couple of questions for you both. Ahmad, how has your time in Evergreen prepared you for life in Polytechnic? All right. Uh, hello, hello. A very good morning, everyone. I'd just like to start it off by saying that it is an honor to be invited to this ceremony. I really do appreciate being involved with Evergreen once again. Okay, so now on to the question. Um, during my time in Evergreen, I was very fortunate to be given several opportunities in which has helped me be prepared for my life in Polytechnic. One way that my time in Evergreen has helped me prepare for the next stage of my life is by making me a more responsible person. Now, we all know as students, our main responsibility is to do well academically. That itself is a very big responsibility. However, all of us will have several other responsibilities to uphold at a given time. For example, I myself back then had lots of responsibilities, mainly because I was in three different CCAs. Although it was challenging to uphold said responsibilities, believe me when I say this, that those experiences I had of upholding said responsibilities has actually helped me be able to better cope with the responsibilities I have now in Polytechnic. Another thing I developed through my time in Evergreen was my time management skills. In order for all of us to be able to carry out the countless of responsibilities we have is by being able to manage our time properly. This then leads to the importance of prioritization. Again, with the many responsibilities we have, being able to prioritize on which is the most important thing to work on at a given time is salient. It is salient because by being able to prioritize it will allow us to use the amount of time we have more wisely. So in conclusion, my time in Evergreen had definitely helped me by developing my soft skills through the opportunities and experiences I had. And because of that, I'm currently coping and doing pretty well in Polytechnic. Thank you. Thank you, Ahmad. Tintat, what advice would you like to give to the SEC 4 and 5 students who are preparing for the prelim and national exams? Hi. Okay, um, Jindat here. Um, thank you again for inviting me to this ceremony. Um, to answer your question, I would say one of the most important things that are uh, SEC4s and SEC5s. Um, one of the most important things that you guys need to remember is uh, time management because this skill is something that will follow you throughout for the rest of your life. It's not just in, um, it's not just in your secondary school or when you're taking national exams or prelims. Uh, it's something that will really stick with you throughout. And if you're able to actually um, manage your time well, you can pretty much do anything. Um, the second advice I would give is probably uh, know when to ask questions. And if you're having any doubts or misunderstandings, do clarify them with your teachers. Because during this period of time, I know it's tough, but uh, your teachers are really there to help you out and really push you through. Um, so don't forget about your teachers. If you guys really need any help, do look for your teachers. And last but not least, um, help one another out because sometimes your teachers might not be available for you, but your friends are there for you. So these are the people that are going to stick with you uh, throughout your whole SEC4 journey and uh, really do help one another out because it really makes a big difference. Yeah, and... 
don't forget to enjoy sec for life also. Yeah, that's all. Thank you, Tsindad. Now, I know both of you have very fond memories of Evergreen. I'd like to ask you both this question. What do you miss most about Evergreen and why? I'll start it off. Uh, what I miss the most about Evergreen would be the sense of belonging I felt through my four years in the school. I mean, I was a member of the rugby team. I served the school through my time being a prefect. And of course, I was trying my very best to be the best cadet I could be in NCC. All of these gave me a strong sense of purpose in life as an Evigian. All the unique experiences I had, whether it being good or bad, I really do cherish them all because it made me be the individual I am today. The memories I made with my teachers, as well as my fellow friends, is also something I will forever treasure so dearly. I guess what I'm trying to convey is that you should all cherish and enjoy the time you have left in Evergreen, because in a blink of an eye, your life in secondary school will come to an end and you'll be on your way to, to the next stage of your life. So spend the time you have wisely, have fun, while also making sure that you focus on doing your best academically. Thank you. Um, okay, so for me, right, um, I'm a little bit, my experience is a little bit different from Ahmad's. So what I miss most about Evergreen is actually spending time with my friends. Because honestly, after secondary school, um, you and your friends are going to part ways and you guys are going to go down different paths. Um, although you don't, you won't lose your friendship, um, you will miss each other. You will miss spending time with each other. And honestly, um, the people that I miss most will be the people from my CCA, which are my rugby boys, because these are the people that I've actually spent the most time with, be it um, during school hours or after school hours. These are the people that actually supported me and actually stayed with me from set one to set four. And even my seniors have actually uh, been really close to me. So um, I guess these are just some of the things that I really miss about Evergreen. Yeah. Thank you, Ahmad and Tintat. And thank you both for your contributions to Evergreen Secondary School. The Chiang Kai Tong Education Support Fund is awarded to recognize and encourage evigians who have demonstrated the passion to contribute and excel. The selected evigians this year have done well academically, contributed to the school through active involvement in CCA, and have demonstrated good behavior and character. We would now like to invite Mr. and Mrs. David Chiang, the patrons of the Chiang Kai Tong Education Support Fund, to say a few words. Mr. and Mrs. David Chiang, please. Hello, everybody. Good morning. Can you hear me? All right. Um, uh, congratulations, everybody, um, to all the, uh, the students who have won uh, many awards and also to those who have um, achieved the Chiang Kai Tong uh, Education Award. Uh, we are very pleased and we hope that you will continue to, to strive uh, move forward and um, have a work-life balance. And um, despite the COVID situation, um, do continue to be brave and overcome whatever um, that come forward. So um, have a great time, everybody. Thank you. Once again, our heartfelt appreciation and gratitude goes out to Mr. and Mrs. Chiang. Thank you. This year, a total of 18 students have qualified for the award. The awardees are Anya Chan Zi Ying and Jobel So Yi Xuan from Two Integrity, Faris Irawan Bin Kamsari from Two Commitment. Cheng Xinru, Jolie, and Tei Yi Hui from Two Enterprise. Tan Xiu Ying, Angeline from Two Dynamic. To Jun Le, Sky from Two Thinking.
Yo Yo Eng, and Cecil Bong Sin Yi from two characters. Or Jun Yuan from Three Respect. Jerome Tan Wei Hao from Three Dynamic. Nur Danisha Binti Muhammad Norman from Three Character. Rachel Tan Jing Wen from Four Respect. Lim Ying Ivy from Four Integrity. Yo Yu Tai from Four Thinking. Isaac Tan Shi Han and Siti Ferzana Binti Muhammad Pharaohs from Four Character. And Chong Yu Tian, Elise from Five Dynamic. Congratulations, awardees. The Cape of Colors Scholarship is awarded to Singaporeans or PRs and international students at the secondary level who have demonstrated good academic progress, character, and active co-curricular activities records. We would now like to invite Mr. Alan Yeo, Executive Director of Cape of Colors, to say a few words. Mr. Yeo, please. Good morning, Principal Mr. Vincento, school leaders and staff and all the wonderful students of Evergreen. I wish everyone a happy 21st anniversary. On behalf of Cape of Colors, I'd like to extend our heartiest congratulations to all the recipients of the Cape of Colors Scholarship. Now, this is our sixth year presenting the scholarship awards to the students of Evergreen. And once again, I'm delighted to join you in this celebration from Tokyo in Japan. Now, the Olympics Games is still ongoing and will shortly be followed by the Paralympics. Now, despite the challenging climate, we see the indomitable spirit of the Olympians. Even though they were uncertain if the Games would carry on, they maintained their discipline of practice and focus in pursuing their dreams. As such, I would like to encourage all of you that you too can stay focused and be disciplined in pursuit of your dreams, even in the midst of challenges. We hope these scholarships awards will spur you on to achieve your goals. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yeo. Receiving the scholarships this year, we have Nur Fasha Binti Mohammed Faslan from Two Respect. Jasrin Binti Jumat from Two Integrity. Javier Wong Chong Ho and Mohammad Harif bin Shais from Two Dynamic. Ang Wang Chi from Two Character. Faru Aflin Zainrul from Three Respect. Nur Inshira Binti Mohammad Asman and Jasper Wu Jing Wen from Three Character. He Yi Fei from Four Respect. T Wen Ting from Four Integrity. Trisha Lo Tian Ying from Four Dynamic. Jasmine Go Shui Ying from Four Character. And Li Zhi Qi, Mikhail Nur Ain Bin Zaini, and Doreen Go Gek Yun from Fire Dynamic. Congratulations, awardees.
Before we end today, let us leave you with some words of wisdom. When times are hard, you might stop for a bit, but it's not over until the moment you quit. On a reverse bridge, failures are the planks. Take one step at a time until you reach its banks. Don't give up on your dreams. Chase them instead. You will find one morning as you wake up from bed that you are the person about whom you dreamed and you can reach great heights, impossible though it seemed. When things go wrong and your back is to the wall, try to stand up. No more can you fall. Life is full of ups and downs. Take them in your stride. You will discover your little star hidden inside. Once again, congratulations to our graduates and award winners. Academic Awards Day 2021 has now come to a close. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for gracing us with your presence today. It has been our privilege to have been your hosts. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Mr. To, Mr. Lap, Madam Tay, teachers and fellow evigents. I'm Rexton. I'm Nichelle, and we are your MCs for today. We commemorate National Day on the 9th of August annually, but in Evergreen this year, we will be commemorating our nation's birthday today on the 6th of August. Singapura means Lion City in the Sanskrit, but how did our flag and pledge come about? Join us on the voyage to find out. But before that, let's listen to our National Day's message by the Minister of Education, Mr. Chan, Mr. Chan Chun Singh. Dear principals, teachers, and students, this is our second National Day in the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic. The past few months would have been particularly challenging for all of us. However, this collective experience has actually drawn us closer as a community and nation. It has also brought out the best in us as we see our people coming together and working tirelessly to keep Singapore going. Let me share a story about a group of secondary three students from Northland Secondary School. A friend of theirs had been experiencing difficulties during this period and was unwell and unable to attend school regularly. Concerned, they came up with a plan. They sent him positive messages set up a task list and took turns to help him keep up with school. These small and simple acts of care lifted their friend's spirits and showed him that he was not alone. This is but one example of how all of us can show care and kindness to those around us and contribute to collective resilience in our current situation. I'm sure all of us have witnessed instances of others reaching out to those in need in our schools and neighbourhoods. These acts of kindness in our everyday life show exactly what our Singapore spirit is about. Our teachers have been beacons of strength. They have persisted amidst the challenges to keep our students safe and enable their continued learning. Exciting new experiences such as SYF goes online, the use of technology to make learning come alive, and developing interactive games bear testimony to your creativity and can-do spirit. Because of our teachers, our students can continue pursuing their interests and passions. We refuse to let the pandemic bring our lives to a standstill, supporting and motivating one another in the spirit of togetherness. Our Singapore today is built by the many individuals before us who were determined to overcome the odds as a team. 
I'm proud that we, in this generation, have continued to display such determination as we continue to overcome the challenges in the days ahead. Remember that with care and compassion, we all can make a difference to those around us and uncover new opportunities even during difficult times. This is our Singapore spirit. This is what makes us special as a people and nation. Every one of us can make a difference. As we commemorate our nation's independence this National Day, I would also like to thank all fellow Singaporeans who have done much to uplift and cheer one another on. Standing together, we have overcome many challenges before and we can do it again. Happy National Day. Hello, I'm Bosco. I'm from Two Character and I'm from the Singapore Youth Flying Club. To me, I'm currently in secondary two now. When I was back in secondary one, live performances have to be held over Zoom, YouTube, or multiple online platforms. When I was in primary six, before the pandemic, I get to witness live performances in, I get to witness live performances, which are pretty unforgettable. Hi, I'm Ernest from the Singapore Youth Flying Club. Well, firstly, it, from the live concerts in in the hall, they have moved to online Zoom meetings and this has affected me really because I feel that having live concerts in the, in the hall is more immersive than having Zoom lessons in the classroom. And in the hall, I can talk to my friends, but in the classroom, I have to sit very far away from them. So it has affected me greatly. Okay, uh, good morning. My name is Amsha and I'm from Tree Enterprise and I'm the president of the Singapore Youth Line Club. So before the pandemic in SEC1, uh, I remember fondly the celebrations in the hall where everyone was allowed to sing along, one had to wear the mask and everyone was having a lot of fun. Then the next year when the COVID pandemic came around, uh, we all had to switch over to online celebrations. So that put a slight damper on everything, but it was still fun nonetheless because the planning committee managed to pull off an excellent celebration. Uh, usually like during the normal days for like national day, right? Um, the uniform groups, uh, the cadets and like all of the evigents will all be like gathered together at the courtyard. But then during the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, uh, we have to like, I think we have to like pre-record our NDP process, our drills, and then like show the video to the evigents at the classroom. I'm Jin Yuan from True Respect. Uh, firstly, the UG are not able to march in and out for the National Day. Uh, which is quite disappointing because this is supposed to be one of the features in our school national day. Besides that, the national day celebration will be held virtually instead of the previous year we were, which was held uh, physically. Hi, I'm Xiaoyu and I'm from Tree Commitment. First of all, we cannot gather in large groups anymore, so uh, I'll definitely miss the, the assemblies we have in, in school. Um, I think we wouldn't be able to um, experience the school spirit uh, of everyone singing um, the NDP songs together. Yeah. I'm Yuan from One Respect. Due to the pandemic, like, usual performances were held by students were like cancelled, and then gathering in the school hall for like National Day song were also not allowed. In like the normal times, we will be able to like gather together and watch like the pole parade and like people marching in. And like because of this pandemic, we can only like watch it in online and there will be like lesser people marching. Oh, usually during National Day for both school and for like Singapore National, uh, what I enjoy most is about like the uniform group parade. It's like they are very cool looking and then they look very disciplined. And then from the drills performance, you can see that they actually spend a lot of like time, quality, 
and like decisions in order to like make sure and, and ensure you become a like, success. Uh, I enjoy watching the Singapore National Day Parade on broadcast on the television. I especially enjoy the Grand and Glorious Parade where the different contingent march in. I think it is a distinctive and significant feature that uh, all Singaporeans should be proud of. I like watching the, the parade on TV with my family. Um, we usually um, decorate our house with um, the Singapore flag and we especially like watching the military um, part because, I don't know, the, the tanks just seem to excite my siblings the most. Well, I guess I enjoy most about National Day is like the parade where the uniform groups will be marching in as like it's, it stands for like the start of the National Day. Performing for us now is GTS 19, Evergreen Secondary School. Performing for us now is COMWS 46 Evergreen Secondary School.
repeat. Form teachers, please join as an entire class and name yourself after your classes. I repeat. Form teachers, please join as an entire class and name yourself after your classes. Thank you. Question 1. Madam Halima Yaakob is Singapore's 8th president. True or false? Good try, Vigens. Madam Halima Yaakob is Singapore's 8th president. She was sworn in on 14 September 2017 as the 8th president at Istana. Question number two. Who was Singapore's president before Madam Halima Yaakob? Is it Mr. S. R. Nadan, Mr. Ong Teng Xiong, Mr. Tony Tan, or Mr. David Nair? Good job, Evidence. The president before Madam Halima Yaakob is Mr. Tony Tan. He was the president from 2011 until 2017. Question 3. What is the meaning of the term Majula Singapura? Is it onward Singapore, forward Singapore, come on Singapore, or together Singapore? Good job, Singap Good job, Evigence. The meaning of Majula Singapura is just onward Singapore. It was named Majula Singapura to capture the mood and heighten the feelings of Singaporeans towards Singapore. One dynamic. Oh, okay. Question 4. Changi Airport is named after the Chennai tree, a tall tree that used to grow in the eastern part of Singapore. True or false?
Good job, Evigens. Changi is an area located at the easternmost part of Singapore. Its name is believed is to be derived from the Chennai tree, a tall tree which used to grow in the district. Landmarks in the area include Changi International Airport, Changi Prison, and Changi Village, with Changi Airport at its heart. Question 5. MAS stopped issuing $1,000 bills in 2021. True or false? It's a double point question, so do they do get this question correct? Good job, Eugens. MAS stopped issuing $1,000 bills to reduce money laundering and terrorism financing risk. I see that 5 Dynamic has come out to the top. Next question. What is Singapore's tallest building? Is it the UOB Plaza, MBS, One Raffles Place, or the Guaco Tower? That's right, Evigens. The build limit of Singapore is 180 meters. However, the Guaco Tower is 184 meters tall. Five Dynamic has still remained at first place. Question 7. How many local TV channels are there on Mediacorp in total? This is another double, coin, double point question. Evigens, getting this question correct would be extremely useful. Is answer 5? 6? Seven or eight. Good job, Evigens. Media Corp has six terrestrial channels Surya, Channel Five, Channel U, Channel Eight. Pasantam and CNA. At midnight of 1st May 2019, Octo ceased transmission as a separate kids and sports channel due to lack of viewership. Question number 8. What is a double point question? What was the first NDP theme song? Is it Call Nomi Singapore? We are Singapore? Stand up for Singapore? Or One People, One Nation, One Singapore? Good try, Evigens. NDP theme songs were first introduced in 1984, starting with Stand Up for Singapore. Question 9. What is the theme song for this year's NDP? Is it The Road Ahead? One United Singapore, Our Singapore, or We Are Singapore? Well done, Evigens. The name for this year's NDP theme song was written and composed by Lingyi and Evan Lowe. 
Next question. What is Singapore's longest river? Is it the Singapore River, Kalang River, Rojo River, or the Geylang River? That's right. The Kalang River is the longest river in Singapore, flowing for 10 kilometers from the Lower Pierce Reservoir to the Kalang Basin. Let's see the scoreboard. I don't know who Renee is or what class you're in, but uh, good job to you. <laughs> okay, next question. Question 11. What is Singapore's first UNESCO site? Is it the Singapore Flyer, Gardens by the Bay, Singapore Botanic Gardens, or Sentosa? Good job, Evigens. Do you know that the National Orchid section of the Botanic Garden houses orchid named after the likes of Elton John, Jackie Chan, and even Princess Diana and Nelson Mandela? Last question. This is a double point question. Okay. Singapore hosted the Sea Games four times. When was the last time we hosted it? Is it 2013? 2014? 2015? Or 2016? Please think carefully of your answer. Well done, Evigence. Around 4,370 athletes participated in the event, which featured 402 events in 36 sports. It was opened by Mr. Tony Tan King Yam, the President of Singapore at the aforementioned stadium. The final medal tally was led by Thailand, followed by Singapore and Vietnam. Oh, fire dynamic, nice. Good job everyone. We have come to the end of the NDP Fun Fact Kahoot. We hope you enjoyed this Kahoot. Next, we have serial number 45, Evergreen Secondary School.
Resilience. Strife. Harmony. Um, if we just always strive for the best, um, also the evigent values are in line with the Singapore spirit, where um, you know the students and staff show respect um, and integrity. We are showing good um, characters, right, in a uh, enterprising, dynamic, and forward-thinking school community. Yeah. Even though the transition to home blended SS technology-based learning has been very difficult, I feel that both the teachers and students alike have risen to the challenge and that they've really surpassed what they've been through so far. So we see that not only have they been able to familiarise themselves with the SLS systems and Google Classroom, we also see that they are doing really well in terms of maximising it for home-based learning, also as self-directed learning. Additionally, even though the students have to deal with stress and fatigue from the upcoming examinations, we see that they really display resilience in the community because they're willing to help out their peers who are in need, as well as to participate actively in classroom discussions. Uh, EVG is done very good. We all work together, staff, students, everything. So, Singapore, we can make it together safe. Well, with the current uh, COVID-19 situation, uh, it brings a lot of uh, great uncertainty, uh, just like uh, what we had in 1965, where, where we first gained independence. So we have to do it again, uh, show to the world that even though we are small in terms of size, we can do it, okay? we can be the best in the world. Just as Singapore has overcome many of their challenges in the past, I believe that we can do this by being very socially responsible and doing our personal best. We must remain very optimistic that the situation will actually get better with our continued efforts and we should also work together and collaborate with our peers in order to make sure that Singapore is actually able to attain progress and become a more prosperous nation. We can do it again. We can fight for the COVID-19. Singapore can. Hello everyone, this is Mr. Luck. When the teachers asked me to record a video about the Singapore spirit, the first thing that came to my mind was the Parade Square. And why the Parade Square? It is because I believe the Parade Square displayed words that exemplify the Singapore spirit, namely respect, integrity, commitment and enterprise. These are our four school values and I believe they exemplify the Singapore spirit. All of you, together teachers, have demonstrated enterprising spirit by overcoming the challenges of COVID-19. And all this effort takes commitment. At the same time, integrity. This is the reason why companies and countries like to work in Singapore and with Singapore because we honour our words. And I know eVisions have all shown this by even you know, returning lost iPad and doing the right thing even when no one is looking. And last but not least, respect. We talked about this at length during the last few weeks, especially during the Racial Harmony Week. It is not just about respect for religion and race, but it is also respect for one another despite our stations in life, despite the jobs we hold. It's respect for everyone. And with that, I'd like to wish Singapore happy birthday. Hmm, I see a flag in red and white with five stars and a crescent moon. What do you think this symbol signify? And who was instrumental in the creation of our Singapore flag? Former Deputy Prime Minister Dr. To Chin Chai was appointed to lead a committee to design a new flag to replace the British Union Jack, which had flown over the island for over 140 years, from 1890 to 1959. Dr. To was passionate about the design of the flag. 
Dr. To Chin Chai then created a flag with the meanings of each element mirrored on it. Red represents international brotherhood and human equality. White represents our pervading and eternal purity and virtue. The five flags, the five stars reflect Singapore's principles of democracy, peace, development, justice and equality, while the crescent moon depicts a young nation on the ascent.
These are the words we recite every morning, but do you know who wrote it? In February 1966, Minister for Foreign Affairs, Mr. S. Rajaratnam, wrote this pledge as a way to promote national loyalty and consciousness among citizens following Singapore's separation from Malaysia on 9th of August 1965. The wording of the pledge was based on the belief that Singaporeans could overcome the divisions caused by differences of race, language and religion. Do you actually know why we commemorate National Day? You probably would have answered, the day when Singapore gained independence. Yes, you are not wrong, but is there more to it? The Malaysian Parliament voted 126 to 0 in favour of a voter initiative that expelled Singapore from the Federation on August 9, 1965. In a broadcast news conference, the distraught former Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew declared that Singapore had become a sovereign, independent nation. Thus, every 9th of August, Singapore is decked out for the occasion with flags lining the buildings, patriotic music filling the airwaves, people dressed in red and white, and not forgetting our annual National Day Parade. I bet you guys are numb and tired for sitting down for such a long duration, right? All teachers, please grant permission for your students to stand up and dance. Yes, you heard that right. You're not delusional. Please stand up and follow the student leaders for the NDP dance. From teachers, please go ahead and take a photo of your class dancing. Have fun! See the sun.
now? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Unfortunately, we have come to the end of the NDP hey, celebration. Despite it being a little different this year again, we hope that you enjoyed it level the day. Do have a restful holiday and stay safe. For the site 1 to 3, remember that you still have your exams next week. So study hard and we wish you all the best. Once again, I'm Rexton. And I'm Nichelle. And we are happy to have been your MCs for today. Thank you.